All right. Thanks for coming back to another episode of the Bigfoot Society podcast. Got a great episode for you tonight. But before we get started, wanted to remind you of a few things. Uh, if this is your first episode with Bigfoot Society, definitely check out uh, our Instagram at Bigfoot Society. That's where most of our content gets put on first. And also, if you want to hear a little bit extra conversation with our guest tonight, you can go to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. And uh, there's always a uh, extra after show that gets posted. Uh, you can join and support the podcast there uh, for different costs per month. There's exclusive merch. There's extra content per month. It's it's a good stuff. Good stuff. So um, without... Without any further ado, uh, let's get our uh, our guest on. I'm actually going to read his bio before I bring him on. Uh, so here's his bio. He is an artist, researcher, and experiencer. He's the co-founder of Wild, Wild and Weird West Virginia, uh, host of Wild and Weird Radio. Uh, he's researched things such as UFOs and the paranormal for over 30 years. Uh, he's been in projects such as uh, Small Town Monsters, The Mothman Legacy, and On the Trail of UFOs, Dark Skies. In 2020, he witnessed what could be Bigfoot activity. And in 2021, he produced a short documentary of one of our investigations. Uh, of course, I am talking about my friend, Mr. Ron Lanham from uh, Wild and Weird Radio. How's it going, sir? It's going great. How's it going on your end? Doing well, doing well. Just hanging out. We are having a snowy day in Iowa. We're going to get about a foot of snow, so we'll get it here, and maybe it's headed your way, although this storm yeah. is headed down south, so we'll see. But, uh, Ron, a lot of people have wanted me to talk to you, and I think I've been working my way around the uh, wild and weird cast because I just had Jesse on <laughs> last, yeah. literally last week, and I was looking through my photos, and I had Joe on uh, last May uh, in you know, I always had a, a, a fun chat with, with all you guys. So I can't wait to talk to you tonight. Uh, but I would love to start with uh, the beginning. So let's start with uh, what is it that first got you into the weird? Was there a certain thing you remember watching as a as a young lad or maybe it was a little older or, or what are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. Uh, what got me into the weird, so to speak, mm -hmm. is uh, it was about 1975 or 76 oh, and I had wow. a UFO sighting. And oh, uh, that was with my family. So, wow. and, well, yeah. And what was weird about that is it, you know, I found that out later. I, I, I knew it happened, but I remembered it kind of as a dream. Right. So it was kind of a foggy dream. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing some research at one point and came to the conclusion uh, by asking around and asked uh, my mom actually that had had you know did this actually happen yeah it did wow and uh and so it all at that point came back like literally it all came back at that point oh that's and wild so yeah uh and after that i started uh, investigating uh, psychic phenomena uh in particularly out of body experiences uh, astral projection um uh, a lot, you, you know, you've seen Ghostbusters where Peter's yep. with the, uh, yep. the Zinner cards. That's me. Uh, I actually <laughs> did that. Awesome. I would actually sit up in at lunch in our school and I would test, uh, I would test people. Oh man. So, yeah. so do you mind if I ask that, that UFO sighting ask. you had, how old, I, I have a feeling I can ask anything. You can ask. I You're can good. ask anything. Uh, how old uh, ish were you at that time? I'm just curious. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was probably around six years old at that point. Okay. Uh, so I, I remember it pretty well. Oh, uh, man. So you five, were five like six, yeah. the age you were like uh, just getting into eight to ten as Star Wars is is yeah. revving up and all. That's such an amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's just one of the coolest things is like you experienced that as a little kid that's very very yeah. cool stuff yeah. um do you remember uh that ufo experience like uh do you remember uh what you what the ship looked like anything mm -hmm. about the yeah. ship at all literally it was almost exactly and what is weird is at the time you know i questioned it was like you know ufos everybody thinks they're flying saucers but uh, over the years you know no they're not they're almost mm. all these things are are nocturnal lights and mm, this was your okay. typical nocturnal light. It was a very bright orange uh, glowing uh, orb. 
is what it was and uh -huh. it was it was interesting you know i remember uh, i remember my dad jumping out of the car and, and we actually stopped the car and, and looked at this thing and him actually saying the words uh, that's a ufo or that's flying saucer one of the two wow and those are things he didn't say so mm. you know but either way i became very fascinated with the subject and uh it just one thing led after the another you know and here i am wow Oh, that is so that is so wild. So when you're saying like uh, orange lights, orbs, um, would that be close to the whole like uh, spook lights thing? Okay. Or like, OK, yeah. Like what's the is there a what correlation there? Or? Yeah. What yeah. you're saying? I believe, yeah. honestly, in all these years, uh, you you have to you have to think about why, what just happened. We changed the name of UFO to UAP. OK, right. There's a reason that they did that. An identified flying object kind of says that this is an object. It's something physical, but a UAP, not necessarily. UAP may be a, uh, who knows what it is, you know? This could be some kind of a extra dimensional thing. We don't know. But the point is, it may not possibly, you know, probably be solid. This may be more of a spook like kind of a situation. Mm, so, wow. yes, uh, we don't know what these things are. And I think that that's one of the big things you're going to start hearing here real soon is mm -hmm. there is going to be a correlation that kind of puts these things together. Wow. Wow. Did you always live in uh, West Virginia then? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can't imagine growing up in a state like that where the, the, the culture and the legends are so like, they're so baked into you oh, yeah. living there. I, I feel like it would just be crazy. You're probably learning about cryptids from a super early age, uh, maybe hearing stories from grandparents, stuff like that. Is that, did you hear about cryptids pretty early on or? You know, you had your occasional person, you're you watching TV. Of course you'd see Bigfoot okay. in search of things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, ghost stories were a big thing. You know, that was always a big thing. And some of my first research was actually paranormal. So it was, you know, ghosts, the whole psychic thing, all that. So uh, in fact, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of it I attributed to uh, paranormal activity at first, you know, really you, you learn as you go. Oh, wow. And okay. you know, this is one of those things where we today, our number one motto uh, at, uh, you know, at wild and weird and at the, uh, at the collective, the research that we do it with the uh, mm. West Virginia high strangers collective is that we throw everything on the table. Every possibility has to be looked at. We can't just sift through it. So, you know, it, it kind of seems like at times some of these ghost sightings might be more than that and vice versa. You just never know. But, yeah, uh, I grew up hearing these great ghost stories. You know, I, my, my parents always told me or my grandparent, actually, uh, my grandmother would tell me the story about how they were they were walking around this uh, this area, this road. And this gray thing appears in front of them. Mm. And and then it shoots off into the sky. You know, this is something wow. I've heard for a very long time, and uh, I'm doing this for uh, for uh, Ash because this is uh, this is the lead into that that <laughs> that uh, this is part of the story. So okay. this is how that happened. And um, what is crazy about it is, at the time, I really didn't even put two and two together because, you know, it honestly freaked me out a little bit. Uh, and that's weird because these things don't typically freak me out. I'm the one who mm. runs into the graveyard with the, you know, the, uh, the meters and whatnot. But at the time we weren't expecting that. And, um, this is of course the famous, uh, or I guess almost famous now, uh, Mothman encounter that people want to call it. Exactly. I don't call it that. Okay. So okay. Let's, let's Interesting. Put the, put the All right. Record. I put it a Mothman like and everything mm. I've said, it's Mothman like. And mm. why I say that is because. At the time, I never considered it. It was way after that we were at an event. I believe it was it was Ohio Bigfoot. And okay. someone came up to the table and they had me describe it. And because they had seen some paintings that I did. And they're like, you've seen it. And I'm like, I saw something, you know. Mm. And they're like, oh, you saw it. And I described it. It's like, that was it. You knew it was it. I'm like, I can't wow. say that. I can't say that. As a researcher, I can't say that. Uh, as a believer, possibly, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. And that's why I do joke every now and again and tell people that, well, you know, Mothman's family friend, but, um, anyway, so here's what happened on that, <laughs> that night. You caught that. Okay. Cool. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened to that <laughs> night is, uh, 
we were visiting uh, my parents and uh, it was me and, and my girlfriend at the time, she's my wife now. She okay. actually put up with me enough to, you know. Good for make, her. Yeah, yeah. Someone's <laughs> got to keep me sane. Exactly, totally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, without her, it's just not going to work. So <laughs> so we were, we were actually heading home. And we drive the same route every time we go around this ridge. And if you've watched the the Mothman, uh, the Mothman legacy, legacy Moth yep. that's right, Mothman yep. Legacy, you will know where I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And we come around this uh, this curve. Now, here's what I forgot to mention in that, and we, okay. we both mentioned it. But she didn't want to be in the, in the in the film, so but I'm mm. okay to tell this part of the story. She's with me, and. We both kind of smell a um, almost like roses is what we Ooh, described weird. it as. Okay, yeah, very weird. It's like a phantom smell thing, right? Mm. And then we come around the curve, and that's when I see this thing, and we both saw it. My headlights hit it, and it's this gray form, and it's kind of squatted in the road, and um, okay. it's weird. I'm thinking at the first thing, you know, instantly you're like, oh, that's a bit really big bird. You know, it's like a, it's a monstrous sure. like vulture or something. And as I, as I'm sitting here looking at this thing, it stands up. It's not a bird. It's something much bigger than a bird. It stands up. Uh, and the weird part about it is that when it stands up, it doesn't really have legs. It, it has what, uh, where the legs are, I can kind of see through or it's shifting or it's phasing or it's, it's doing oh, some, weird. something weird. Yeah. It's really yeah. weird. And then the weird part is it sticks out its arms or what I said were arms. They're like appendages of some sort. I don't know what they are. Uh, sticks them out. Those things are as long as they're touching both sides of the road. Okay. This is big, very long. Ooh. And with one movement, pushes them down to its side and shoots straight into the sky. And when I say shoots, I mean, it shot into the sky like that, you know, um, when, when, uh, Fravor is always talking about the tic-tac when he says it went pew, you know, yeah, that's yeah, it. Right. Yes. Wow. Except for when it did that, it actually shot into the, uh, the trees into the canopy and we had our windows down and you could hear the, the debris falling out of the tree. This was physical. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. This was the crazy part. So at that point, my brain starts saying, uh oh, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. And I remember hitting the gas, and that's no lie. I think it was about a quarter of a mile before I, I, I lit up on that gas. And no doubt. Dude, it was oof. It was weird, you know. Yeah, that's so yours weird. It, Mothman's a, a weird thing because it's like some people are thinking like it's it's a uh, interdimensional whatever and and then there's some some people that are thinking it's an actual physical being and right. um it sounds like you're more mm -hmm. the the second uh that's how you view mothman is is more yeah. of a physical being then no yeah. no absolutely not oh okay no 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 i don't think we're dealing with physical beings with these things. oh okay okay no no yeah i used to yes yes i did but remember okay. everything was on the table i can't deny these accounts that I hear of these people seeing these things that just they're as solid as you or me. And mm. all of a sudden they, they vanish or they disappear or you can kind of start seeing through them. That's exactly what the bottom of this thing was. It was, it was see through. That didn't make any sense to me. See, that's the part. And that's the part where I said, okay, I'm out of here because it, that didn't make any sense at all. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, when you're confronted with that, it's different, man. It's really different. I don't know. I, I don't think that these things are completely solid, though. I'm not one of those people. It just it blows my mind. You have an object or a, a being where it's like the bottom half. You can kind of see through it, but then it flies off and like it, it's, you know, wings are flapping through trees oh, and it's oh, knocking it, stuff. Literally. And, yeah, yeah, that's just wild to me. But you know, as it as it shot up, it was just like. A, a gray streak that shot up and that is when you know we started talking about it after that and it was like that's the thing that they described from the 1950s that's mm. the thing that that mom saw you know and was in the same area that's the scary part you're literally maybe a quarter of a mile from where they had their sighting wow that is so crazy when when yeah. you uh your story was out in the open after being in the stm documentary did you have people kind of track you down and say, or like, be like, Ron, I had this happen, or did that start oh. to happen? Oh, oh this, this, that's happened since. Oh, really? Uh, I don't even know how long. Remember, I was the weird kid. That's so right. I was yeah, the one everyone true. came to when they had weird stories that no one was going to believe. I was the one who 
you know, they would come to. And mm. that always followed me. That followed me into, you know, I worked in, in the pet industry forever. I worked at a pet shop. Okay. People would come in there and tell me their ghost stories. They would come in and tell me the UFO sightings. It, really? Was, yeah, it was constant. It was absolute constant. So, you know, but I never really told my story. And, uh, and, you know, that's when Seth asked about that, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think I posted it one time. I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It was like 20 some years after. I was like, who cares? I don't care anymore. It doesn't right. matter. None of this matters anymore. <laughs> and um, I'm like, you know, prove it didn't happen. Prove it did. It's, I can't. I've tried. So, I mean, if anyone can prove it, wonderful, because I have rationalized this for, you know, 20 some plus years at this point. And it's just like, no, nah, I don't. Wow, that <laughs> I don't have crazy. an answer. I don't have an answer. Uh, you uh, pet store with with reptiles? Is oh, that gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, that's cool. You no, know, that was that's a different thing, though. The pet okay. store that I was dealing with, uh, mostly I was aquatics. This is something uh, a lot okay. of people don't know. Uh, I uh, actually formed the first reef club in West Virginia, and mm. it was very successful. Um, we saved a lot of coral that way. But yeah, wow. I was the uh, the whole uh, used to call me the saltwater guru. I'm not. I, I just I just experimented. <laughs> with, so you know. uh, what is a, a reef club exactly? Then? OK, so you know what the reefs are, right? Right. OK, well, yeah. OK, the reefs were are and were and are under uh, stress. Okay. We hear about coral bleaching and whatnot all the time, right? Um, in the day, and this was, you know, in the 90s, all of your coral that came in uh, to the trade was pretty much wild caught. And they were catching it out of the wild. And it was not a real sustainable thing. So a uh, few people around the world started really aquaculturing this stuff. They started growing it, figuring out what it takes to keep it alive. So we started doing that in the shop I worked at. And... Mm. We actually had a really nice little uh, coral farm going and it turned into an even bigger coral farm at one point. Wow. So it was really cool. Yeah. To be a part yeah. of that was really cool. And we that taught it really cool. Yeah. We taught everybody how to do it. So it's kind of like what we do now. Yeah. We just teach people. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's let's a change. Let's, uh, let's rewind a bit. And I want to make sure because there's a chance that, that people listening to this are like, oh, th this is really cool. But like, we kind of skipped over like, so what is wild in weird West Virginia? What is the uh, the mm -hmm. elevator pitch when you meet wait, someone wait. like, this is what I do? Wild weird West You know what I tell people? Because it's so vast as to what it really is. It is. Yeah. I say, we're, the, we're the ambassadors of the paranormal. We, okay. we focus on uh, research. We use, we're, we're artists. So we use our art to go out and actually start these conversations with people. Mm -hmm. We found that out by accident. Mm. This was complete accident. We used to go out and do the reptile shows, as you mentioned, the reptiles. Oh, sure. Because we did reptiles for like 12 years. So we would go out on these shows and we start taking our art out. Well, people would come up to the table and start telling us their accounts. And it's the same thing I told you before. Like, people, yeah. they yep. want they want to, but they don't have anyone to talk to. I'm like, you know, I just looked at Joe and I was like, we need to do this. And he's like, well, you're going to have to start talking to people. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, it. it Talking about Joe, uh, Joe Purdue, your, yeah. your, your co-conspirator in, uh, in wild and weird West Virginia. Very cool guy. There's an episode I did about a year ago, uh, listeners, if you want to check that out. And also, uh, Jesse from Hellbent Holler is yeah. kind of uh, starting to, um, hang out with you guys on the podcast. And I actually interviewed her last week as well. Um, so uh, always good people in West Virginia, uh, for sure. Um, I'm curious, you've got so many cryptids in West Virginia. Do you have a favorite one, uh, where you're like, I'm, I'm all this, or is it kind of like, it's hard for me to, to pick just one yeah, type Mothman. Of? It's Mothman. It's, it's Mothman. And I say that because it, it is to us, uh, all these can be that, but Mothman literally made that town. Oh okay. yeah. And, and it wasn't, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this little town literally subsides off of that legend. And mm -hmm. that's another thing we do at Wild and Weird West Virginia. We promote paratourism, majorly promote paratourism. Paratourism. Interesting. Which, yeah. That's something that everybody's got. And I used to say this back when I was with, uh, you know, my first thing I did was was uh, was Ghost Watch. And we used to open up with every town has a great ghost story. Well, everybody's got a great everything story. Cryptids, mm. ghosts, mm -hmm. UFOs. Find it in your town, 
start talking about it, start talking to people, yep. start, you know, no one's really hiding from this stuff anymore. You got to remember when, when I was growing up, they hid from it. This wasn't something that people were, you know, too happy about They're, you know, Oh, let's bury that, you know? Mm. And, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, double-edged sword, uh, down in, down in Point Pleasant, John Keel put the Mothman on the map. For sure. Okay. And he will always have, you know, my respect for doing that. Uh, some of the research questionable, but I really don't care that that's neither here nor there. What really happened was that the legend was born and it sustains an entire town now. It always blows my mind how there are towns that have amazing legends and stories. And they're like, yeah, we don't want to deal with that. Yep. At the same time, the town is literally dying and there's yes. nothing coming into it. I'm not going to name names, but no, it's true. listeners yeah, know who I'm talking about. Yep. It's like, so it sounds like first you gotta, you gotta figure out what's your town legend. You got to track down the stories. You got to talk to maybe the older people in the town uh, mm -hmm. that remember, you know, the generations back uh, exactly. or maybe younger people too. They know that stuff too. And then it's, then you got to get in good with the people in charge of the town. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. you, you've got to make a name for yourself. You know, okay. One, you know, and with us, People knew us from the pet shop. I mean, everybody mm. from everybody knew us. So, you know, that's one of the things we came out of nowhere almost. Like a lot of people are like, well, where did these guys come from? Well, we've been here. We were just doing something different. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> right. and then the people who know you, they they come in and they're like, Oh, okay, you're doing this now. All right. But that really does, those those contacts really do help you when you're trying to to do these things, you know, mm. uh, especially when, you, you know, we tried to do, uh, you know, we're putting on the, the festivals now. So that's another thing. Well, and weird con last year. Right. So those are all things that are called public outreach. And that is mm -hmm. what it's all about. We got to go out and do some stuff at the schools, you know, oh, they had so a spark. Cool. we'll be doing that again. So these are all public outreach. And like you said, you know, people run from these, these incredible stories that can make their towns. Mm. And oh yeah. They don't need to. I mean, embrace it because it's not like it was. This isn't, you know, this isn't the 1950s. No, no. Literally, all you have to do is like uh, look at how Point Pleasant just like how much money and people they yeah. bring in when they have that festival. And it's just like it's crazy. Like literally just put up a statue mm -hmm. of the cryptid in your town. Just do it. Like it drives me nuts. But Pe yeah. You know, you got to do it. You got to do it. Let's talk about wild and wild and weird con, right? Yeah, wild and weird con. Okay, okay. I want to make sure I had the right yeah. name. So I, I like the idea. Uh, I have never been to it, but I like how you guys have incorporated. Actually, uh, it's not just sitting around and listening to people talk, and then you know you're you're buying stuff, which is fun too, but you also have seminars on learning how to do things correct yep absolutely and all of that really goes back to those old those old uh, coral reef days mm. that was the model we used that's why the the you know the, uh, the the thing was so successful we had the same thing it was all about education but we had people coming in and selling stuff and buying stuff and then we'd have whatever presenters it's the same thing this is uh, it's all about education and outreach you know, we try to normalize the paranormal. And the best way to do that is to get as many people as you can to actually come to, to this and find something that they like, whether that be collectibles, art, mm -hmm. you know, or if they want to come and listen to some great speakers. And we had some great speakers. Mm. Uh, some of these people blew my mind. So, you know, uh, I was just amazed. Uh, and uh, I can't wait to do it again. But there's so many things we did uh, last year. We also did the uh, West Virginia's first, uh, what was it? The Bigfoot workshop. Yeah. We did the wild and weird yes. Bigfoot workshop. That was a blast. That was, yeah. That oh was man. Uh, did you have, you must've had people come up from all over for that. Like we actually did. Yeah. <laughs> it really, it blew yeah. my mind. It was like, and remember this was at the heart of, of COVID pretty much. Mm -hmm. So we had to have very small groups and we did. Um, we only had like, I think it was limited to 20 people or something. And we had 15 of them show up 
And those people had a blast. That's so cool. So you're like teaching how to do, yeah. uh, I would guess like track casting and track casting, tracking. Uh, we went over audio uh, and video. We went over just all kinds of stuff, theoretical applications. That's what it's all about. No one person is going to find this. Okay. Right. That's the most important thing to understand about the paranormal. Well, there's two things. One, the number one rule, and this is for everybody and anybody who's interested in the paranormal research. If you're okay, knowing that you're going to get into something that you're probably never going to live to see the actual result oh, of, wow. then get into the paranormal, do it for yourself. Don't do yeah. it for any other reason, you know, because you're probably never going to see it. We're lucky at this point to see as much as we have seen with mm -hmm. UFOs. We can only hope that that's going to happen with like Bigfoot and some of these other cryptids, right? But it could happen. Could so, happen, yeah. Yeah, it absolutely could happen. And, you know, the, the number two thing is you really just, to, to, the, to the best of it, uh, really what it comes down to is you've got to, uh, you've got to do this for the right reason. I think that's what mm. I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to, trying to say. You've got to do it for the right reason. You don't like really, that. you don't really do it to be noticed. You do it to get other people noticed you do oh it. my goodness could you imagine and if you're like do it that that just irks me so much but you know there are people out there like yeah. i'm gonna like become the most amazing yeah. person on fill in the blank network it's true and it's like dude you gotta you gotta do something because it's your passion and you love it and like you love to geek out about like weird regional cryptids like the Van Meter Visitor that's mine in Iowa yeah. and yeah. you know like or that's the right. Mothman for you and it's like if you're not doing it for that like people will see through you so quick and it's like yes. you might as well just go away you know it's true yeah and and then you know those people also are the ones that you know they don't want to share the the, the stuff you know that's mm -hmm. kind of why we did the mm -hmm. collective you know with the collective what that is it's basically a research organization that we're trying to get off the ground okay and and while we're con sort of is uh the meeting place of all that okay? Oh, okay because it's not a con as in convention it's a con as in conference so it's really a massive okay. ufo cryptid and paranormal conference and all those people come together share their information with each other and go from there. You know, whatever they want to do is is completely that. But the idea is this. No one person is going to be able to do it. Okay. Right. And, and that's exactly. what we're getting at. So share your information. That's what we do uh, amongst ourselves. You know, if mm -hmm. you want to be in it, it's not an exclusive club. All you got to do is say, hey, <laughs> I can I can contribute. Okay. What can you do? Can okay. You Okay, I can't go out in the field. Okay, wonderful. What can you do? Uh, can you go like check out records and such? Okay, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Contribute. Oh, that's cool. I was gonna ask. So literally, like, it's not like you're going to people and being like, "Hey, be in my my awesome no. club." Like, you're just like, "Come on, let's let's get everyone hanging mm -hmm. out and tell us your your uh, yep. special powers." You know, and yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much, basic. Yeah. It's a basically a paranormal Avengers. Yeah, that's what it is. That's so cool. Um, I did want to call out from earlier. Um, uh, give a shout out to Ashley or Ashers, uh, for bringing up that question. Uh, which Ron launched into so amazingly. I didn't I even have to. to bring it up. Um, but uh, definitely uh, check out on Wednesdays, We Talk Weird, which I will be on. Uh, that's her podcast. I'll be on it, actually. Uh, I'm recording with her uh, next week, so that'll be fun. But anyways, um, I am curious. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, in 2020, you witnessed what could be Bigfoot activity. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. curious about that. What was that about? Yeah. Um, I, to this day, I really still don't know what that was all about. Um, we had actually, I'll paint the scene for you. We had okay. recently just came back from um, doing an investigation. We went to check out some stuff. It was a Bigfoot, alleged Bigfoot activity. So we, we went out to try to find some stuff, we found a few tracks and whatnot. And this is where I got some weird readings. We, we ran that by, we've talked about that before on some stuff. I, I don't really go into it because it's like, I still don't quite know what to make of it. Some of the tracks that we did find were showing a bit of radiation and I don't know why. Radiation. Yeah. 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 Uh, the funny thing is we went on this, uh, investigation and, um, good friends with, with Stan Gordon and sure. Stan always told me, you know, take what you got, you know, just throw everything at it. If you got a guy okay. counter, take it with you. I'm like, okay. 
got a guard counter. Why not take it with us? So I took it out there and not expecting to find anything. Right. And uh, where we were taking these tracks, uh, we, we got a reading. And it was higher than the, the the background radiation. It wasn't like danger reading. It was like, you know, it was it was a little noticeable, but it wasn't anything like, oh, you know, get out Chernobyl. But, um, <laughs> right. you know, it wasn't that. But it was above background, normal background radiation. Normal background radiation, I think, was something like 15 to 17 CP. And this was, was about ask, 35. Yeah. Okay, so, wow. Yeah, significant. And what it was doing is it would go up and then it would go back down. And this would happen every, I don't know, every now and again. And we got it a couple of times. I'm like, okay, there's something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've talked to people. It shouldn't happen. That's all I know. Um, hmm. So anyway, we got back from from this, this, and uh, we're like, well, let's go and just chill out. You know, so Joe has this little, little place. And uh, we took the family up there. We took uh, my wife, his wife, the kid, mm -hmm. and, and we go up there and to relax. So as we're relaxing, uh, we're like, well, let's just shoot this because, you know, we were, we documented the whole thing. We document all of our work. That's another thing we do. Okay. Yep. Um, so we documented it all. And I was like, well, let's just finish the documentation on this and give our, how we feel about it, you know, because the radiation thing, we didn't feel too good about. So mm. that's kind of weird, you know? So we're recording that and we, we started hearing some weird sounds uh, down in the valley where we're, where we're at. I'm like, hmm, okay. So, didn't think much of that. And after we ate, uh, we went back out, sat on the porch, and we started still hearing these weird sounds down in this valley. And uh, there's just some crazy stuff that goes on. There's some there's some dogs that are barking down in there. Uh, oh, and then all of a sudden, the dogs just stop barking. There's Ooh. some weird howl-type sounds. Uh, and then there's there's knocks, okay? So this is okay. everything. Yep. Now, here's what people uh, don't quite understand. I am not a Bigfoot guy. Okay. Interesting. Um, I, I saw some weird stuff. I've seen, you know, shadow figures. I've seen the Mothman type entities Ooh. and whatnot, but I had not yeah. seen a Bigfoot. Okay. Or anything like it. Well, that night, um, we are listening to all this weird stuff going on. And this goes on for like almost a half hour. So we're standing on this back deck. It's raining. There's a valley right in front of us. And there's all these sounds coming and they keep getting closer to us and closer to us. And all of a sudden I start hearing what sounds like, and we both heard it. It sounds like uh, a female, but it's, it's speaking in foreign language. It's language I couldn't quite understand. Really? Now this is important because I had not a Bigfoot guy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the Sierra sounds were. I was just, yeah, exactly. Till after this. Um, mm -hmm. So this goes on. And then as we're standing there, you know, Joe has a flashlight and as he's taking this light, he's shining it out into the, into the uh, darkness and it's pitched down in this valley off to the side, the light comes on. And I'm like, Joe, that light came on. He's like, nah, it's, it's always been on. I was like, no, it hasn't. And it goes off. He's like, that's a motion light. Like, uh huh. Ooh. So we go out into this field. There's a building there. There is a motion light and we play around a little bit. We're trying to figure out well, how can you, get that to go on you have about 25 to 30 yards from this light and it'll come on and what it's always on it's like 10 percent, and then it kicks up to 100 it's one okay. of those kind of lights yeah okay? so uh we look at that and we're like that's weird you know so we go back around this fence it was in, behind a fenced area and we go back to where we were we were uh standing uh we were on the balcony originally so we're underneath the balcony we're on the ground level now underneath the balcony looking out at this field where uh where this light came on and he has this light again in his hand, his his LED flashlight. He's mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a sweep. I'm like, okay, make a sweep. So he makes a sweep, and as he's bringing the light over, the beam uh, comes over, and I'm watching this beam, and I see a dark a dark figure. Oh man! Duck down as the beam comes over, and as the beam is right in the dead center, it's it's gone, right? And I'll just freak out. I'm like, grab, I'm grabbing. I'm trying, you know, first thing you do with any paranormal investigation, you try to debunk it. So okay. I start like trying to make shadows. I'm trying to figure out how this, how this could have not been what I, I saw. Couldn't do it. And um, about that time, he starts feeling weird and he's like starting to tear up. And he says, really? we got to go. We got to go now. I'm Whoa. Like, okay. Okay. So we backed out. And as we got around the corner of the house, 
I, I could hear this kind of like a, and I describe it to this day. Uh, it sounds like, it sounded like, uh, you know, how a, a beehive sounds, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So take a beehive, throw it through a microphone and throw uh, about 70% reverb on it. Yep. Okay. And then turn it down to where you can barely hear it. Whoa. That's weird. what it sounded like. Well, okay. That was pretty much uh, going to be enough for us. So we, we went inside. Um rationalize this whole thing. I was like, I don't know what I saw, you know, but I, I just don't know. Well, as we're inside, they have the kid, the kid's asleep. Okay. This was, this was a baby. So okay. he, uh, I think he was like six months or something at the time. I don't remember. I'm, I'm terrible with age. I, I don't remember how old I am. No, <laughs> I don't know. Like a thousand or something. But um, so the, the baby's asleep. That's the, that's the key here. Okay. And first, I think it's my wife who hears it. She's like, the baby's crying. So Joe goes in and he, he goes in and he looks. And he's like, comes back out. And he's like, not my baby. Oh, man. I'm like, okay. Yikes. So eventually what happens within about the next five minutes is his wife hears it. And then he hears it. Okay. Mm. Every, I didn't hear this, by the way. Okay. I didn't hear the baby. So the, all three heard the baby playing this day. But it wow. was not it was not their baby. Now we go again, documentation. So I grab the, the uh, phone and start recording all this. Okay. Know. And you know, the funny thing is the, uh, the date of it was, uh, it was August the 21st anniversary of the Hopkinsville. <laughs> is that really, that's funny. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you later off camera why that's an important date to me, but um, unreal. yeah, that's funny. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So anyway, uh, get up the next morning and we're going to go out and we're going to check out, you know, this field because it's too dark at night and there's no way I'm going out there because, Hey, I learned a long time ago. You don't, if you, you feel weird, you get out. Right. Yeah. So, and that's number one thing too, guys, if you're out there investigating, you feel weird, get out. You trust. You're your, talking about like physically health. Yeah. If you're, if you're starting to feel yeah. weird. If you have yep. a, the slightest feeling that you, something's wrong, get out. That's great advice. Yeah. So, but, yep. um, so the next morning, sun's out. We're like, oh, go out there and check it out, right? Mm -hmm. So we go back to the field, and I see what where this thing ducked down. I'm like, oh, thank okay. goodness. It was yeah. just an illusion. It, that that grass couldn't have been much, you know, maybe this high. You know, it's just like, yeah, mm. I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. About like okay. that high, right? So it's maybe a foot high. Like, there's no way. This thing was huge. There's no way. And then when I say huge, I mean it was massive. This thing, the shoulders were massive and it had a very little, what looked like a little head, you know, Okay. very disproportionate. Hmm. And, um, I'm like, well, that's, that's good. You know? So I'm on the other side of the fence. Joe goes out and we're trying to recreate the scene. I'm like, yeah, that's okay. about where it was, Joe. And he's like, okay, how about now? And he starts going down. Yep. I'm like, how are you doing that? And he's like, dude, it drops off down here. Oh, weird. It yeah, dropped yeah, off yeah, yeah. down into the valley. Oh, so no. this wasn't like something had squatted like I had thought and mm -hmm. ruled out. It simply backed down the valley, the same valley where we heard all the sounds coming from. Okay. So what we figured out was that <laughs> this is crazy, but what we figured out was and what I figured out at the time was we're dealing with something there that had tactic. It had a clear line of sight where we were. Yep. It was in a perfect sniping position. These other ones were down in the valley drawing our attention while this thing was off to the side. Oh, scope. man. No yeah, way. Yeah, right? Right? Wow. So that realization sets in, and it's like, okay, what do you do with that? Yep. I don't know, man. So, yeah, I uh, immediately uh, got a hold of Stan, told him the whole thing, and okay. he's like, well, that sounds, you know, legit. And I'm like, okay, not a Bigfoot guy, so I just wanted to double check. Oh, man. But yeah, and then later I would hear the Sierra sounds and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, I was yeah. going to, I was going to bring that up. So when wow. you heard the Sierra sounds, did you notice similarities wow. or like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, it's, it's a gibberish. It's a okay. gibberish except for ours. Uh, it was more of a female, really, mm. really female. And you know how the Sierra sounds have that more, um, uh, they call it the Kung Fu type. Right. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Not like that. Not like that. Okay. It was very, uh, it was female and it was just like, it's like I'm talking to you now, but it would be like the words would like oh, that's, me up. Yeah. yeah. Like that. See what I mean? Yep. But I can do that. It's okay. Um I'm I'm curious. Uh I bet is that the only uh time where like a Bigfoot track has had radioactive I don't know. I really don't know. And yeah. that's what I was trying to find out. And, and you know, everybody's like, Oh, this I'm pretty sure that's 
that's not quite normal. Well, I talked to Stan and he said, as far as he knows, yeah, because they don't test for it. Yeah, exactly. Why, why would they? Yeah. You, know? you have to remember uh, that the people who tested with, you know, uh, radiation meters with Geiger counters and mm -hmm. dosimeters, those guys were pretty much into UFOs. Mm. So that's in the old UFO handbook. You know, that's uh, that's something that you did with that. And why not? You know, like he said, wow. throw everything we've got at it. And that's literally what we do now. We take just about everything into the field at this point. And that's why, like, Jess, she does the same thing. I mean, the Jess equipment so arsenal. Good. Oh, my gosh. The yeah. equipment arsenal. They had it at uh, Wild and Weird Con. It was amazing. And it she did a she did amazing. a talk about, like, gear and yep. things at that as well, which I like. Sure that's did. amazing information. For yes, sure. It, Oh, as a first hand, I mean, that people got to go up and actually touch this stuff. You know, you got to use it. You got to actually look mm -hmm. through the night vision. You know, no one's going to let you do that. Yeah. And, and you're, you're able to talk to someone who actually goes out in the field and does uh, things yeah. with the gear. And you're not just like reading Amazon reviews and hoping yeah. for the best. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's whatever. But um, you guys have an amazing YouTube channel. One of the the favorite uh, pieces of content that you have on there is the Wineberry documentary. Oh, that yeah. is so, so cool. Um, wow. Has there been new info that's come out to that story at all since it's been put out or we have been actively watching Wineberry and what's great about Wineberry. If you mm -hmm. watch the video, you notice I shot, the witness from behind and never showed the face. And true. that was because this was supposed to be a candid interview. They did not want to be on camera. Okay. They, they were terrified to be in the woods. Right. Yeah. By the end of the video, she's like, Oh yeah, put me on there. I don't care. You know, and I, you guys are great. You've helped me a lot. And yep. to the, this is why we, what we do. Okay. Mm. And it's the best representation of what we do. She actually is a, a field investigator at this point. Uh, she learned how to go out and collect data herself. She has a great area for it. She okay. sends us the information. We look at it. We we evaluate it. We help her. It, not everything's a Bigfoot, you know, and it's that's what you couldn't hope for anything more. You really couldn't hope for anything more. Exactly. So, yes, it is still an ongoing investigation in that area. Mm. That, is, that is cool to hear. Uh, people listening to this, you have to go to. I'll have the YouTube channel linked in the show notes for this and like definitely watch everything that's on there. But like the Wineberry documentary is just a really good piece of content. Thank you. And I would totally recommend everyone watch that. Thank uh, you. It, it was a fun watch when it came out. I was, I was excited for that. Um, have you ever had any, there any um, dog man stuff? Is West Virginia have dog man stuff? West or? Virginia does have dog man stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay. There are a couple of uh, reports that got sent to the collective that I've looked at. Uh, oh, really? Kind of read about, you know, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I really didn't, um, honestly, never really considered the dog man a actual thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I always thought it was just a misidentification of like, you know, Bigfoot, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, sure. But, you know, who knows anymore? I don't know anymore. All right. I mean, I've seen so much stuff at this point. I, I don't really question right. much of anything. I just take the reports now and it's like, okay, thank you. Uh, and you know, I'll try to give them an, an, an explanation if they ask for one, if not, I'll just file it into our files and, uh, okay. you know, we'll look at it for later because sometimes that data is going to help us in the future. You know, it may not be relevant now, but five, 10 years from now, we may be able to cross reference that and say, Oh, look, this was happening. You know, so you are taking the, when you say taking the reports, are you talking to the person? Yeah. Uh, directly? Yeah. Okay, we, we do. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a preliminary to make sure, you know, mm -hmm. it's worthy. And that's what happened with Wineberry. You know, uh, we took the report and it was like, Ooh, there's some stuff here that just, mm. just sounds amazing. And I, and I got the witness to agree, uh, to let us come in and document it. And that was no way was I expecting what we caught at Wineberry. That still blows my mind. And I don't think I could ever be that lucky again. I honestly don't. I mean, it's like that doesn't get any better unless Bigfoot walks out of the woods and mm. says, Hey, I'm over here. Point the camera this way. I mean, yeah, right. Exactly. To, uh, yeah. It's crazy. When you're taking a, a report from someone, are there things you always uh, hope that come up that are like, oh, I got one. I got, 
I got a, a, a crazy, well, okay. I'm sorry. I won't say that. I will say, um, you know, like when you're fishing and you're like, Oh, I got a, a, yeah. an awesome one. Like, that's what I'm trying to yes, say. Yes, I do. I know exactly. You get it. Yeah. About. Like, what is it that like yes. sets the bells off in your head and you're like, Oh, this is going to be awesome. You know? Well, my thing is, um, I, I'm, I'm more the UFO paranormal guy. Okay. Sure. And, you know, having experiences growing up and I am an experiencer, um, I know what to look for. And I used to hate that. I, I really did hate it. And, you know, I, I got to the point years ago, I was, I was, I wrote several books, by the way, I just never published them. I mean, they're, they're still sitting here. That's, Ron, why are you serious? No books. No, for real. Yeah. It and is. here's, here's the reason. Here's the reason. Okay. Go so ahead. the reason is this, if I wrote these books and I put this out and this uh -huh. was, this was about uh, around 2000, 2005, something like that when I had enough to do it. Um, if I put this out, it discredits me as a researcher or so I thought. And, you know, that really bothered me. And uh, mm. when I got to talk to Stan for the first time, I talked to him about that. Okay. And he was like, don't let this stop you. He's like, yeah. you know, um, you had honest, thing, honest, you know, uh, events. That's part of what happened. So you can't really run from it is what he was trying to say. Mm. And honestly, I look at it now as, well, those things really helped me because I can get a report and I can look for key things in that report and know that this person is probably pretty legit. Okay. Okay. So there are key markers that you look for in these kind of things. Uh, right now I'm, I'm doing an in investigation. It's been a year long investigation and wow. it's on a, uh, a weird UFO incident uh, up North and it is crazy, hmm. but there's a lot of things there that, uh, that check the, uh, check the marks, you know, they, okay. they check the boxes. So, you know, there's things you look for. And that's, that's, I think, something that people need to look at. And you also have to make sure that you, number one, check their belief systems. Okay. If you're dealing with somebody oh, who yeah, thinks that everything's totally. a Bigfoot or everything's a UFO or, mm -hmm. you know, no, it's not. And if they're okay with you saying, no, it's not, you're, you're going to be okay to work with these people. But if they take offense to that, you're not going to work with these people, you wow. know. So that happens. I mean, that really does happen. Sometimes we'll do an investigation and get shot down. It's very simple. Hmm. You know, that happened with the, uh, not too long ago. That was the one that was making the rounds. The, what was it? The Bigfoot, alleged Bigfoot carrying the deer or something. Oh, across that, the Michigan river thing. No, this one was actually in, uh, in West Virginia. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I had to oh, find okay. it. I'd find it and send you a link to that. It's very I'm not sure I saw that one. We uh, interesting. We investigated it. Uh, okay. We came to a conclusion this was probably a, a poacher, and uh, hmm. got back with the you know the the person who we were gonna the witness who was we were gonna come up and and investigate the area just to be safe because there were a couple of things that sounded anomalous. Okay, kept blowing us off pretty much, and uh, that's okay because right after that. That's when we found Wineberry. So we focused everything on oh, Wineberry. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And yeah. it worked out just fine. But oh, this man. surfaced again after uh, a year. It surfaced again not too long ago. And we had to go in and, and address it. So now it's officially addressed on the webpage. I didn't address it before because I thought it was a non issue. It was like, you know, there's this isn't, this is not what someone thinks it is. Well, the crazy thing is like in this, how the internet seems to work now is like every 10 years stuff gets brought yes. back somehow. And now it's on like yes. TikTok or something. And uh, people that don't know the history, they're like, Whoa, this is all brand new. Yes. And it's like, no, like look at, uh, you know, That's sites that have, right. yeah, yeah. Documented that it is not legit, you know, something like yeah. that. You just have to double check. Yep. You know, don't necessarily believe your eyes. You know, if you see a video, don't believe your eyes. Mm. It, it, you know, mm -hmm. don't do the research, you know, do the research and then draw your conclusions. Ask the questions, then draw your conclusions. Um, witnesses, ask the questions. You know, mm. that's that's the number one thing. Have this conversation. If they're OK answering uh, these questions that are kind of difficult, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably going to be a, a good case for you. But if they shoot you down and they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't remember completely or, you know, uh, nah, I don't believe that's what that was. Right. Keyword is believe. Yeah. It's the worst thing that you can have in, mm. in the field is a, is a rigid belief system. And I learned at a very young age is wow. you don't believe it. You have to just throw everything on the table. And that's what we do. Like I said, 
It's important. So, that's so cool. Um, you say you have at least 30 years um, <laughs> research. Yeah. Um, over those years, <laughs> are there are there books or resources that you find yourself always going back to relying on things that you can recommend? Uh, I would absolutely recommend anyone who's involved in paranormal research, try to find, uh, what was the book? Uh, it's by Lloyd Arbach. Uh, I believe it was the Parapsychologist Handbook. That is a very, very good book. Um, it's full of information and it's good information. It's not, uh, you know, there's accredited stuff in there. Mm. That's, that's important. Uh, it tells how the research works, you know. If you're interested in uh, psychic phenomena, uh, whatnot, there's just too many of those. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even recommend just one. And right. my library, honest to goodness, I'm not even going to joke to you. It's so big that uh, I really need a, about three bookcases. I'd say something like that. Oh, I believe it. I yeah, it, it's it's it. ridiculous. Um, I think uh, as a primer, if you can find them, the old. Um, was it the Tom Life? Yeah, the Time Life books. Yes. Just go to enough tag sales or in Goodwills, you'll start if to find them. Find like they're those. out there. Yeah. Yes, if you can find those. Yep. Those were probably some of the best source material. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're still relevant to this day. Uh, they're amazing. So, yeah, if you could find that, that would be great. Journeys Out of the Body, Alex Monroe. If you're interested in that, uh, I can't recommend anything better probably. And then there's a couple of remote viewing books. So yeah, those are my go-tos. Uh, and on the most, I guess, uh, what is it? The, the, uh, recommended reading list, right. Uh, abduction, John, the late John Mike, probably the best book on the phenomena that was ever written. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, those are your primer. There you go. All right. Fair enough. Any, uh, do you have any Bigfoot books on your shelf? I, you know, like I said, well, again, big, you're not the Bigfoot not a guy. Bigfoot guy. I'm not sure. a Bigfoot guy. Or any cryptid books yet at all. Well, Anything Mothman, like obviously. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of Mothman. There's a lot of Flatwoods Monster. Okay. There's a, there's a lot of uh, West Virginia. Yeah, there's a lot of West Virginia stuff. So Bigfoot's on there. He's just not like center stage. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's there. He's just kind of gotcha. hanging out in the corner. I got gotcha. you. That is cool. What's your uh, What's your favorite Mothman uh, book? I'm I gotta be Jeff's, uh, Jeff Wamsley. Yes. Uh, both I've of those, both tried those to books. talk to him over and over again. I just need oh the connection. Gosh. Yeah. He was, he was actually at wild and weird con and that was a monstrous oh, cool. thing to get yeah. to actually hear him tell the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, the oh, man, man has, you know, he's talked to the witnesses, the witnesses who are either gone or wow. they, they just won't, you know, talk oh, anymore. Man. So he has actually had those conversations and to hear it come from him, <sighs> Yeah, man, that's something. That and that's another so cool. reason. Yeah, that's another reason we do what we do to keep mm -hmm. these legends alive. It's important. That's true. It's very important because, you know, ask your family members, ask your grandparents. Yes. They're not going to be around forever. Get those accounts and write them down. You never know. You may need them in the future. There is nothing scarier. And you'll, listeners, you will experience this as you grow older to have someone gone. And then the realization that kicks in that it's not just them that's gone, but the stories are gone and you can't get that in a book or on the internet. And it's horrifying. It is absolutely yes. horrifying. Yes. Yeah. And that is a prime example of why we are where we are with totally. pretty much everything. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm the ancient astronauts guy in West Virginia. Okay. <laughs> oh, so man. it's the same thing. Yes. Yeah. You know, humanity has lost its its way. It, it doesn't yep. remember because of that, what you just said. That's yep. exactly why we don't remember. It's because crazy. someone someone didn't take the time to ask great, 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 great grandfather mm -hmm. and write down this on this stone. And that is what happened. It's wild. Oh, man, Ron. This has been a super awesome chat uh, uh, so far. You're going to... Uh, hang on in the uh the after show for the the patreon we're going to chat about some some other weird stuff but before we make that uh the end of the main episode do you mind um doing a, a summary of how people can uh keep up to date with what uh yourself and joe uh and um are doing with wild and weird west virginia and all that oh yeah it's easy just go to uh wild and weird wv.com there's a link there to literally everything, our shops, awesome. okay. uh, all, all of our events, 
the Facebook page, all the social media. It's literally a monster empire. <laughs> Okay. It is. We didn't even talk about the shops. Oh my goodness! You it's make big. these cool little Bigfoot keychains. Yeah. We're makers. Yeah, it's so we, cool. We we make stuff. Like I said, yep. we're artists. Uh, Joe's an, a great sculptor. Uh, I do three D work. Uh, I've been doing three D work CGI forever. And so you know, we we create those things. Sometimes we print them out. Sometimes we hand sculpt them, and then we mass produce them. Or well, not really mass produce, but we produce them en enough of them. Uh, mm. You know, the little Mothman figure. Uh, oh yeah. The Mothman Museum buys those. We sold, we sold. I don't know how many of those things. Thousands. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, I bet. so yeah. Um, all those things support us. That's how we do it. We, uh, we pretty much run that way. That's and, right. And definitely check out the the YouTube. That is a new thing for us. We've been doing the podcast for you know a year, but the mm -hmm. YouTube. I just got an idea one day. It's like, well, let's let's try it. Let's just see mm. what happens. It's good. And, you know, I have to make things more difficult for myself. So I have mm -hmm. to put in, you know, the actual, uh, you know, the actual graphics and whatnot in there. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, so it's trying try to make a little more, a little more interesting. Uh, the Fallen World series is my favorite. There's a lot of information in those. I saw, I saw one of those come out and I was like, man, I got to. Yeah. We can talk. We'll talk more about that in the after show because I like I've started to get into like the. um some stuff like that it's very interesting it's a it's a rabbit trail for sure oh, uh, but ron thank you so much for coming on um uh, always always maybe i'll uh always welcome I'll, I'll hopefully chat with you maybe a year or so down the road see how things are going with wild and weird but uh thank you so much for hanging out everyone go and Anytime. check out uh wild and weird wv.com check out the youtube pick up a Bigfoot keychain, all that good stuff. But uh, thanks again for coming on, Ron. Anytime. Thank you.